I'm kind of slacking off. Uh, I, I don't really feel like gaming because, to be honest, like Apex is my favorite game to play. I think like uh, Apex Legends is the most bonfire game ever. It's my favorite game. Uh, but I did buy the Division 2 as well as God of War. So there was like Cyber Monday sales and I got the, the Division the Division 2, God of War, and uh, Tekken. And I, you know, I would like to delve deeply into all of these games. I'm going to be running for political office in the District of West Vancouver for City, city Council or perhaps even the Mayor's Office uh, in October of 2022. So that's also a distraction, uh, plus a lot of other things. But I get a real sense of satisfaction out of creating original digital media, just because I like the idea of creating something that could last forever. So um, in, in, in light of that, the one thing that I wanted to do is just kind of do like an all-encompassing uh, review of my taste in other artists. You know, like I ha I. I Back in the day, I bought a lot of music on, on iTunes, so I figured I'd just roll down, like, a lot of the music, uh, just give, like, brief synopsis of, like, all the artists that I have uh, spent time appreciating, and uh, maybe you could tell me some of the artists that you like, and uh, especially enjoy. So, like, I just posted uh, Aphex Twins um, set... Uh, to a couple different people's timeline, like Apex Twin at Field Day. Uh, there's like this specific part of the set that I just felt was like a good demonstration. I'm not sure if he's doing it live on PA or what, but like there's a part of this like Field Day set that's just freaking amazing. There's a lot of other parts of this video. Like the way that this live set was recorded <coughs> is impressive and like a lot of the imagery like a like a lot of the um, kind of two-dimensional graphics that are like later on in here I think there's a lot of work on behalf of a lot of people to support Avex Twin in this as far as I know he doesn't really handle any of the um, the visual aspects of his of his uh, his art right like he, he, he pretty much exclusively focuses upon his uh, sound work and his recording and, and production and musically and I don't think that Aphex Twin uh, endeavors into any of his kind of this nice imagery that accompanies him so like you know as far as Aphex Twin is concerned there's a lot of there's a lot of technical people supporting him especially in this field day set a lot of probably uh, acoustical engineers and sound techs and uh, visual people as well so, like, I think it's important to consider that, but, like, it definitely Aphex Twin has been one of the most, uh, for me, the most personally, like, ins inspirational uh, musical artists ever. I remember listening to him as a kid just because of the contrast between what he's doing on certain tracks on, like, Drux. Uh, he, he's doing, like, you know, minimalist piano work and kind of abstract piano composition, just, like, completely stark minimalist work. And... Uh, as far as I know, he's doing it electronically, but he's able to emulate a really organic sound to uh, the emulated instruments, on, like on this album and on especially computer-controlled instruments. This as well. This album's pretty impressive. Uh, I listened to this. It's not a very popular album, but like uh, his computer-controlled acoustic instruments part two, which I I'm not sure if that's actually a computer-controlled acoustic instruments. Uh, recorded acoustically or if it's emulation i wouldn't be surprised uh, either way anyways aphex twin has always been definitely one of my favorite artists um as a kid amy winehouse i'm a big big fan of amy winehouse especially like in vancouver there's uh some spots uh locally that tend to play a lot of amy winehouse um i'm a huge fan of her like vocal delivery as well as like uh, just her songwriting, I think she had like such a raw soul about it. And the documentary, like I became much more interested in Amy Winehouse uh, uh, during the documentary of her, of Amy on uh, Netflix, which you know she's pretty edgy. So like I think she she was able to because of her vocal talent and the quality of her songwriting break into that really mainstream market 
but at the same time she has the edge of like a really gritty underground artist so yeah I could never get enough of Amy Winehouse that's for sure um kind of on a different vibe um Alina Baraz, her vocal talent, you know, I'd say she's she's holding up a, a very different uh, vibe than Amy Winehouse, but, like, I, I really appreciate her vocals a lot. She's definitely one of my faves. I didn't, like, Alicia Keys is on here, but I, I haven't really spent a lot of time listening to Alicia Keys. I listened to um, Alina Baraz quite a bit. Spent a lot of time, as far as hip-hop is concerned, like, Freaking ASAP Rocky, always been a fan. Like his early work, ASAP Rocky's early stuff. Love it. As far as like the the, the hip hop vibes, I mean, like I definitely think a lot about um, Kendrick Lamar's Good Kid, Mad City. Because when Good Kid, Mad City first came out, here's this this album, Deep Purple by ASAP Rocky. But when Good Kid, Mad City first came out, I grabbed that album right away. Like I grabbed it on the day that it was released. And I graduated high school, and I went to high school, and I was buddies growing up, childhood friends, with uh, Chase Irving in West Van. And Chase Irving was actually, like, working as a cinematographer and producer on one of his videos at that time. So, like, when I, I spent a previous Christmas with Chase, and he's like, yeah, man, I did the Money Trees video. I was in the studio with Dre and Kendrick, man, and I was like, dude... That was a great album, but, like, I haven't listened... Like, then he got big... And it's like one of those cliche kind of things where like an artist becomes really big and then I lose interest. And so like from the time that Kendrick like busted onto the Grammys and like really started to sell a lot of records, um, I don't know. I kind of like drifted away from him, I became like more interested in like Schoolboy Q. I, I've always been a huge Schoolboy Q fan, but like even in his last couple albums, I've kind of drifted away. But like setbacks and like habits and contradictions, Schoolboy Q dude love it like those are probably like my, my some of my favorite hip-hop albums of all time like uh and of course there's like local artists that i try to listen to right like there's lots of local hip-hop dudes um to talk about a local kind of lesser known artist um alex mayer who's subbed to my youtube channel here you want uh alex i'll do a review of alex mayer here you go like this this cat alex mayer um, who reminds me a lot of David Morin. Both Alex Mayer and David Morin are uh, local Vancouver guys. They're both very similar in approach to music production, recording, and songwriting. But like, I, I was listening to this album, especially like Dream Final. Like, uh, like I was trying to listen to his full record yesterday, but it cut off. It stopped at the gym, and then I started listening to something else. But like, uh, I listened to like several ch songs on his. Uh, on his album that's available on iTunes, and I was really impressed by the quality, the mastering, the recording, the songwriting. It was really good. And I listened to David Morin's album, which, I mean, if I were to compare Alex Mayer, local Vancouver guy, and David Morin, who some people are are, are not uh, familiar with, he's pretty, you know, he's no Kendrick Lamar, but like, uh, David Morin, here, where, where are you, David Morin? Here you go. This guy. Uh, so if you compare, <laughs> where is he? There's no pictures of him. There he is. Alex Mayer versus David Morin. Alex Mayer versus David Morin. This is David Morin. This is Alex Mayer. But uh, if I were to compare them, I'd say David Morin's stuff sounds a little bit more like it's self-produced, and Alex Mayer sounds a little bit more like it's studio polished. But, like, you know, I think the quality of their songwriting is, they're both really good. I was suggesting to Alex on uh, Facebook Messenger that he should probably consider collaborating with David because I think they're both doing, like, very similar stuff and they both live in Vancouver and they're both, like, you know, they both definitely remind me one of another. So, like, there's a completely different uh, level of local music. <coughs> Who should we go? Oh, Capleton. Here we go. Yes, Capleton, Reign of Fire. Uh, I, I listened to Capleton way back in the day. Way back in the day, and then now he was on Yeezus, which is my favorite Kanye album, and I think like his, his contribution to Yeezus was, was everything to me. And, 
Yeah, man, I don't know. There's something about Cableton's vocals, like, sometimes, when he hits the money, like, he does, you know, he doesn't always really hit the money, like, I think Bounty Killer is a little bit more consistent in terms of, like, his vocal presence and, like, yeah. The magnitude of his badness. But, like, you know, when Cableton hits the money, I think he really does hit the money for me. Oh, Clark. Here we go. In the, a more Aphex Twin kind of, uh, vein um yeah i mean honestly to c it's interesting to compare clark's work with that of apex twin because i think they're both you know much like david morin and alex maher uh clark and apex twin are from the same geographical area which is like west uh the western uk western england and uh, I think Clark is probably deeply influenced as well as uh, Square Pusher and Clark, although it's only a couple years difference. I think uh, they were both deeply influenced by Aphex Twin. And I must say that what, with regard to like the textured layering and mastering of Clark's work, I think he's definitely underappreciated. Like I think he, in many ways, exists in the shadow of Aphex Twin, whereas a lot of his production. I don't know, man. I would give it to him, give it to him hardcore. Like I think he's like, in terms of the quality of uh, this production value, equal in every way, equal in every way to Aphex Twin. Uh, Damian Marley, obviously, listen to a lot of Dav Damian Marley. Um, yeah, not welcome to Jamrock, but there for you. Uh, I think what one of my favorite songs of all time like definitely one of my favorite song maybe my favorite song of all time i would say is damian marley there for you i would say damian marley there for you is like definitely contender for my favorite song of all time if you never listen to it listen to it the deftones oh much love to the Deftones and Chino. Dude, no, no one could overstate how sick some of the Deftones shit is. It's the bomb, bro. Uh, yeah, I rock the Deftones hard, bro. Oh, lately, Doja Cat. Definitely loving Doja Cat lately. It's amazing. Uh, out of all Drake's albums, the only one that I've really spent time listening to is this album. If you're reading this, it's too late. Uh, I love this album. I, I freaking love it. But uh, And also Take Care. Yeah, I've, uh, I, I definitely love Take Care and this album. But beyond that, I don't know. Drake's fallen off. Elephant Man. Here you go. Dude, honestly, um, what is it? Um, The track is called, um, it's not Batman, a Batman. I think it's Tall Up, Tall Up. That's my favorite song on this album. Elef Elephant Man, the Energy God. Dude, it's a good dance hall. It's freaking hilarious. But Tall Up, Tall Up is, is awesome. I'm going to, I'm going to drop that one day. I'm going to drop that in a DJ set one day. Tall Up, Tall Up by Elephant Man. Bonfire. Elliot Smith. Here we go. Miss Misery by Elliot Smith. Dude, honestly, it's an interesting thing to consider artists and how, like, Kurt Cobain's suicide and, like, Elliot Smith's death. You know, I think about Elliot Smith. I think about Kurt Cobain. I think about Amy Winehouse and many other artists and how... I really think that their untimely demise and their unfortunate demise is a real extension of their their artistry, right? Like I think they're like die they're willing to like die for their art. I, I think in many ways that's what it represents. Which has a deep felt effect upon their art. Like if I think about Chris Cornell's suicide in relation to Soundgarden, um like dude Pretty Noose by uh Soundgarden hits deep now that Chris Cornell actually hung himself. I, I mean, like, in my opinion, like, Pretty Noose by Chris Cornell is, it's now one of my favorite songs because of how freaking crazy hardcore it is. 
And uh, that's all I have to say about that. Ooh, Green Velvet. Much love to Green Velvet growing up. La La Land and this whole album by Green Velvet. Like, I love Green Velvet's live show. I really wish that I had gotten a chance to actually see Green Velvet one day. But, like, yeah, in terms of, like, techno, I think of the Plastic Man, Green Velvet, Plastic Man, just because they're kind of both on a minimalist tip, I guess. Oh, Handsome Boy Modeling School. I, I, I've listened to this track, like, 50 times. I love this specific track by Handsome Boy Modeling School. I think they, they, they've done a lot of other, like, kind of decent stuff. But, um, yeah, I just found this one track, Metaphysical, to be especially standout-ish. Um, lately, listening to Vaporwave. Like, uh, yeah. There's a couple different Vaporwave tracks and artists uh, that stand out to me. Um, but as a genre, I think it's an interesting genre. I think about Vaporwave, I think about Tim Hecker, who's a local Vancouver guy. Uh, listen to his stuff quite a bit. Uh, back in the day, listen to a lot of Horace Andy, but like Vaporwave, anyway. Uh, HKE and Telepath. But it, there's 20, 28, 62. I can't remember what the, the artist's name. Oh, dude. As long as we're on electronic, uh, Jackson and his computer band, this album, Glow. If you've never listened to Glow by Jackson and his computer band, get the album and listen to it because it's fucking awesome and he's definitely undercredited. Like, he hasn't released as much stuff as Clark and Aphex Twin. Like, he hasn't put out the, the, the volume, but, like, I definitely think that his production on, on these albums and the music videos that accompany the songs are it's amazing. Jamie Double X, who I really didn't start listening to until a friend like recommended. I was like, who you listen to? And he's like, Jamie Double X. And I was like, dude, I'll go home and listen to that. And then I did, and I really, really liked this album, like In Color by Jamie Double X, and like some of his DJ sets that are on, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Boiler Room. And the funny thing I was reflecting upon the other day is that Grimes, who's now fucked her way to the the top. There's no, there's nothing wrong with fucking your way to the top as long as it's the tippy top. And Grimes has most certainly done that. But she's never done a boiler room set. And lots of other artists. My cousin, uh, Patrick Holland, has his own boiler room set. I would love to do a boiler room set. If anybody wants to help me record a boiler room set, that would be a nice goal. I would love that. But, uh, yeah, Jamie Double X is, uh, his boiler room set it's rather good. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, Jake Sherman, who I met at a synagogue in West Vancouver. This this artist, he's kind of an independent, uh, small artist. I don't know. He's got like he's got some some success, but uh, Jake Sherman is he's a great artist, man. Uh, I definitely respect what a strong pianist he is. There was a there was a piano at the synagogue. I met Jakey. I was like behind the bar at the synagogue. And uh, Jake, Jake was there with his folks, and they were visiting from New York. And then I was like, "Hey, man, yeah, what do you do?" And he's like, "I'm a, I'm a singer songwriter, piano player." And I was like, "Dude, play some piano for us." And then he just shredded. He's like, probably been playing since he was like four years old, but he shredded me to, to all hell. I'm very slow. At piano, I'm working on it. Like I try to work on it, but it's just there's so many artists, man. You know, it's it, it's impossible. It's impossible for to me be, for me to believe ultimately in the in, in, in what I'm doing because of how many artists there are to compete with. I mean, like you know, one must be humbled. Uh, I could go on for a long, 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 long time. Uh, who, oh, Joanna Newsom. I'll, I'll, I'll conclude on Joanna Newsom. But have one on me, or uh, maybe and I'll mess in jo Joji after her. Uh, Joanna Newsom, have one on me, triple album. Amazing album. Very grassroots, very, like, just brave. She, it's a very brave and, like, I love it. Milk-Eyed Mender, I have not listened to as much yet. 
But like, uh, yeah, have one on me and and Milk Hide Mender and and jo Joanna Newsom, what she's doing in a technical sense. I think it's interesting to compare. You know, because there's a lot of vocalists like Adele, or like, um, you know, people that are just dedicated to delivering vocals. Uh, Diana Krall, who you know, she's playing a harp and a piano and a guitar, probably some other instruments. Joanna Newsom works real hard. You know, like Sarah McLaughlin. Dude, Sarah McLaughlin's a great musician. She lives out the street from me. She lives up the street from me here. Like, two blocks away. And, uh... Yeah, I just think it takes a lot to, to be able to really master an instrument and deliver a strong vocal at the same time. Like, having made the effort toward it myself, I can say that... And then also having to record yourself. Like, if you have to record yourself, master yourself and play an instrument well and deliver a good vocal simultaneously it's it's breaking me down to the point where this is what I decide to do with my time rather than sit there but on a closing note Joji all love for Joji man like dude just I, I, I rock it oh and don't let's not forget Juice World dude honestly Juice World died at 21. Oh, yeah, here is Ian Junk. There we go. Love this album cover, Ian Junk. Dude, uh, honestly, I was watching his Instagram like raps the other day. Anyways, I'm, I'm going to cut it off there. Who do you guys listen to? Uh, I'll call this episode one. <laughs>